Hey guys, we have already discussed both the versions of uh, shortage of first CPU scheduling algorithm that is preemptive and non-preemptive. That preemptive version is also known as shortest remaining time first CPU scheduling algorithm. Fine. So in this video, we'll see the advantages and drawbacks of the, uh, this algorithm. Fine. See, now first of all, the advantages of this algorithm. The, that preemptive version of SJF or you can say that SRTF shortest, rem shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm gives you the minimal average waiting time. Right? I am not saying that SJF with known preemption gives you the minimal average waiting time. But this SRTF guarantees you to give the <clears throat> minimal average waiting time. Fine. You will take any uh, numerical and uh, any problem and you apply all the algorithms on that problem. See this SRT, when you apply this SRTF then you will get the average waiting time which is minimum out of all the algorithms. Okay, No algorithm will give a burst time less than whatever the SRTF will give you. Okay, So the main advantages of this is what it gives you. You can say the minimum average waiting time and min minimum turnaround time also. Fine. Second thing is, it gives the better response time than first come first serve. Response time is what? When the CPU would be allocated the uh, first time to the process after arrival of that process. So the response, uh, response time would be better in case of SJF rather than FCFS. Why so? Because you know, uh, we uh, we uh, apply the funda that the short uh, the processes having a, uh, shorter burst time will be allocated to the CPU first. That is why the response time would be better in in this case. Third one is it gives you the maximum throughput. Now throughput is what you can say uh, number of processes uh, per unit time. Like see, uh, when you solve any numerical, then uh, this you draw the Gantt chart, or you can say from here to here. Suppose we have uh, completed one, two, three, four, five processes. Suppose, fine. So, and here we have uh, like from zero to uh, let us suppose twenty-two. So, from this to this, this is known as what schedule. How much time it is from zero to twenty-two? That is twenty-three unit of time. And in twenty-three unit of time, how many processes has been completed? Five processes. So, throughput would be five divided by twenty-three. So, this is what the throughput. Fine. So, this SJF will give you the maximum throughput. Fine. Or you can say the SRTF specifically if you say then you can say SRTF will give you the maximum throughput. Okay. See, this overall throughput would be same for all the processes from starting to the ending. Suppose uh, this is the ending of the Gantt chart. This overall throughput would be same for all the algorithms because obviously if there are 5 processes then 5 processes would be there till from starting uh, to the ending of this Gantt chart. But main funda is what when you stop at any point, the schedule at any point and then you check the throughput from here to here. In that case, you can say that this SRTF will give you the maximum throughput. Okay. More and uh, because in SRTF or you can say in SJF, we try to uh, you know uh, complete or we try to execute the processes as early as possible because we, we choose the processes having a minimum burst time first. So we try to uh, you know execute the processes many processes more and more processes as early as possible that is why it gives you the maximum throughput you check at any point of time in between the schedule see or you can see overall overall throughput would be same for all the algorithms okay now the uh, fourth point is it provide a standard for other algorithm in case of average waiting time okay uh, standard mean uh, means what see uh, no algorithm will give you the burst time less than the srtf will give okay that is why if you uh, apply any uh, other algorithm on any process and uh, the average waiting time is, is very close to this uh, average waiting time given by this SRTF, then you can say that that algorithm is also good. Fine. That is why it, it, it set a standard for other algorithms. Uh, by checking out the average uh, waiting time and comparing the waiting time with this algorithm, you can say that particular algorithm is good or 
not good fine now let us see the disadvantages of this algorithm the very first or the main drawback is what that this algorithm is not implementable now you will say uh, that if it is not implementable then why we are uh, studying this algorithm although this algorithm is not implementable we cannot you know uh, practically implement this algorithm this has not been implemented in any operating system yet okay but it provides a standard for uh, other algorithm and why this algorithm is not implementable see this algorithm basically depends on the burst time main criteria is what we choose the processes having minimum having the uh, you know uh, shorter burst time first rather than the process having larger burst time okay now see in fcfs what is the case the uh, criteria was arrival time obviously uh, that uh, algorithm is implementable why so because in that case we know arrival time of every process before execution of that process when the process came into the ready queue okay that is why that is implementable but in this case prior to the execution it is almost impossible to you know know the burst time of the process or you can say how much time that process would take for its complete execution it is almost impossible to say before the execution of that process okay and the main criteria is what obviously the burst time and we don't know the burst time then how this algorithm can be implemented that is why i am saying that this algorithm is practically not feasible to implement okay now although there are some ways uh, uh, using uh, uh, those method we can predict the burst time of the process just approximate prediction of the burst time of the process i can uh, uh, you know i cannot say that we can predict the exact burst time of the process but we can predict the approximate uh, burst time of a process so that uh, those methods i'll discuss in next video now second disadvantage is, is it starvation problem with the processes having larger burst time now what is this starvation problem see in the previous video uh, i have already discussed what is the difference between the convoy effect and the starvation problem fcfs is having convoy effect and in this in that video also i have discussed what is starvation problem okay a process is waiting for a you know indefinite amount of time because of some uh, maybe uh, because of the, you know that uh, processor is biased towards some other processes and that criteria may be priority of the processes or anything okay so let us discuss how the starvation problem is there in sjf now let us take a real life example suppose uh, you go to a burger shop and uh, you want to purchase around 100 burgers okay and uh, suppose here is that uh, counter boy and you went there and uh, you you want to purchase 100 burgers and see what uh, if the funda of uh, this shop is the counter boy will serve those person who are having a order of maybe 1 2 3 or 5 burgers or less than you can say 100 burgers okay because 100 is very large amount and the, this counter boy will serve those persons who are having a, you know order of small amount of burgers and some other person come who require only one burger then counter boy will 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 you know uh, serve this person first fine another person came who is uh, requirement of two burger another person came three burger one burger five burger and so many persons are coming who require the burger less than 100 less than 100 so you are waiting here fine although you came first maybe uh, uh, after one person maybe you come after one person but he is serving the person who are coming after you but the case is he is serving those person because he is giving priority to those person who want one two or three burgers so you can say less than 100 burgers okay now you are waiting waiting and waiting so this is what called starvation this is a long process so starvation problem uh, will be with the processes having larger burst time okay 
this is called starvation that is why here because the priority is what cpu will execute those processes having shorter burst time like in this case who who wants one or two burger the counter boy will serve those person first rather than you because you want 100 burgers so the burst time of you is 100 you can say or these processes are having shorter burst time than you that is why cpu is exec cpu will execute those processes and you will have to wait that is why in this case starvation problem is there with the uh, the process is having larger burst time fine see now there can also be convoy effect although this this is not mentioned in any uh, textbook that sgf will uh, suffer from convoy effect but sometimes it is possible i feel it is possible because i observed uh, i observed a case where uh, in sgf also we, the processes can suffer from convoy effect okay now let us take that example see i am taking two cases case 1 and this one is case 2 now we are going to apply sjf with non preemption case sjf with non preemption i am not taking the example of srtf okay with preemption because that gives you the that is the best one see here gain chart will start the time from uh, 0 at 0 only one process is there that is p1 so we are uh, we are taking sjf with known preemption known preemption in that case once cpu is allocated to one process that process will continue its execution till its termination now the burst time is of this one is 50 so it, it will execute till 50 now next is next see at 50 we have one uh, this one is done p2 and p3 in a ready queue now now uh, pick the process having minimum burst time one and one the burst time is same for those for both the processes in that case you will check the arrival time or you will apply first come first serve now check out who came first p2 arrival time of this one is one this one is two one is less than this two so we'll allocate cpu to p2 for one unit of time burst time is one 51 and after that p3 and this one is 50 sorry this one is burst time is uh, 1 so th this would be 52 now uh, calculate the uh, completion time completion time of p1 is what at what time p1 has been completed at time 50 for p2 it's 51 for p3 it's, it's 52 now turn around time turn around time would be completion time minus arrival time 50 minus 0 that is 50 51 minus 1 50 52 minus 2 that is 50 now waiting time Waiting time would be turnaround time minus burst time. Turnaround time burst time 50 minus 50, 50 minus 1, 49, 50 minus 1 that is 49. Okay. Now the average would be, so the average waiting time would be 32.6. Now check out this case. Draw again chart, time will start from 0. At 0 we have two processes P2 and P3. Now the criteria is you have to pick a process having minimum burst time but both are having same burst time 1 and 1 so apply first come first serve check out the arrival time but arrival time is also same for both the processes in that case what you will do to break this tie you will you will check the uh, the ordering of that process see p2 has been written before p3 so we will take p2 first okay for how long it will execute a burst time is 1 so from 0 to 1 in the after that at 1 see at 1 we have two processes p3 is also there p2 has been done p3 is also there and p1 has also arrived at 1 so out of 50 and 1 out of these processes you will choose which one having minimum burst time because we are uh, uh, we are uh, discussing the sjf with known preemption so we'll allocate cpu to p3 for one unit of time 1 2 sorry 1 2 2 now next to p1 for 50 unit of time that is here we have 52 now here calculate completion time of p1 it's 52 completion time of p2 1 completion time of p3 2 turn around time turn around time means completion time minus arrival time 52 minus 1 51 1 minus 0 1 2 minus 2 minus 0 that is 2 now check out the waiting time waiting time turn around time minus burst time 51 minus 50 1 1 minus 1 0 2 minus 1 that is 1 average waiting time would be 2 by 3 that is 0 
Now you can compare although we have applied what here SJF with known preemption. But see here average waiting time is 32.6 here average waiting time would be 0 0.6. So this is what convoy effect. We have discussed this in FCFS because because of this long process, this process, the uh, long you can say that the process having larger burst time, this P2 and P3 are having very small burst time, but small the process is having shorter burst time had to wait for a long time for 50 unit of time. That is why average waiting time has increased. Okay. So for the same thing here we have three processes, three processes same burst time but the change is what only the arrival time. Okay, Here, here the uh, processes having shorter burst time came first that is why we allocate CPU to those processes first and that is why average waiting time is very less. So uh, uh, we can say that see I, I feel that uh, we, we cannot say that SJF remove the convoy effect totally. Yes, SRTF, in SRTF there is no if, uh, convoy effect, but SJF with known preemption is having convoy effect in some cases. Okay. In next video, I will discuss how to uh, predict the burst time, what are the methods to predict the burst time for SJF. Fine. So till then, bye-bye, take care.